So welcome. You might have purchased yourself a Mac Studio and you're wondering what are some of the best accessories I can get for it. In this video, I'm gonna list you a lot of different accessories and even some of the mistakes you can make when buying some of the accessories from Mac Studio because some of the accessories you can buy for this will actually hinder the performance of the Mac Studio. So here's just a lot of things that you might need or you might wanna also include in your Mac Studio. In fact, even Mac Mini or other Mac Tower Studio tower studio that's not out there mac stationary computer accessories so let's go is that the wrong hoodie for this video hey if apple sent me a hoodie I would wear it. Very important note, all the things that I'm talking about in this video are in the description below. And second important note is that even though I have reviewed some of these things on my channel before, I haven't reviewed everything that I'm mentioning in this video. So some of them might not have my personal experience, but just some good ideas that I have been looking at as well, thinking maybe this is worth buying. First of all, one of the biggest mistakes you can make for your Mac Studio is buying a 4K display for your Mac Studio. This really needs to be explained a little bit, but basically this Hunter King guy made another video about this and I'm not gonna go deeply into that and he explains it very well, so there's no need for me to do this again. But basically the way how Apple scaling or Mac OS scaling works is that a 4K screen needs to be not 27 inches or 32 inches. It needs to be like 24 inches or something like that, basically to get a proper PPI for your, you know, viewing experience. If you don't have the proper 110 or 220 PPI like scaling for your screen, basically what your Mac Studio is gonna start to do is upscale it to 5K. That's what happened with my 4K screen. And that's what I thought, flipping egg, this is slow, slow. I can't get into that or I can't actually use it for video editing because it's slow as snail and I thought what the heck is wrong it's because my monitor was wrong it will upscale your resolution to 5k and then downscales it to 1440p to actually give you the best or better UI like actually resolution or UI size but it does that 60 times every single second which means a massive performance hit on your Mac Studio so do not do that but if you're wondering which screens should you get for your Mac Studio then here are some of them first of all we've got the LG ultrafine 5k display and this is 27 inches and this will give you like a best scaling for this now at this price point you guys are kind of getting close to the studio display of Apple display but this if you find this on a deal this will still be cheaper than the Apple display and if you want something like that 5k display 27 inches then this will give you the proper scaling and you're not going to have any performance hits next of all what you can get is a 27 inch screen 1440p and this is much more affordable over here you're not really going to notice that much of this pixel difference if you pixel people then probably but this over here this is factory calibrated you're going to have a delta e of less than two 100 srgb very color accurate monitor if you're a creator very good monitor and look at the price absolutely awesome compared to the you know studio display that mac offers another very interesting monitor is this portable monitor that you might even want to include with your macbooks as well if you you know doing a lot of traveling but basically this is asus pro Art display as well but this is portable 1080p screen that's a 14 inches but then also what this will allow you to do is have one you know just usb-c cable in and you get power and picture and everything delivered with this but it's also very very color accurate so as a creator you might want to get this if you're maybe traveling a lot or some kind of portal aspect this is probably the best portable color accurate screen for creators here's another 27 inch monitor that's 1440p i am using like the 32 inch version 4k monitor of this but basically a very good monitor for creators as well links in the description below next if you're wanting some kind of a monitor stand why not go smart this over here is a smart monitor stand that also gives you wireless charging and some of the usb capabilities built in it's like a hub and uh, like a wireless charger built in as well and look at the price you can get five dollars off here 85 dollars 
So if you're using maybe not the studio display, but some other displays, very interesting setup for your Mac Studio. Just slot your phone in there or iPhone there and then suddenly boom, you've got all your, you know, phone is charging and so on and gives you a little bit of better like organization of stuff as well. Then we have some docks of uh, storage and ports that you can get for your Mac Studio. Now this one over here is a little bit different than some of the other docks out there just because this goes underneath and just basically feels like this is part of the Mac Studio setup but at the same time gives you Thunderbolt support which means you're not going to be bottlenecked by USB-C or maybe like 10 gigabits in speed but a little bit faster. As you can see, you can get up to 2.8 gigabytes per second. Well, actually, this says megabits per second, but this should be much faster than usual USB-C or Thunderbolt enclosures that you have. Inside there, you can put a 2.5 inch SSD and M.2 drive and then screw it down and then boom, there you go. You also have a lot of other like, um, you know, front panel IO as well if you want. And you can daisy chain them together or get like two of them if you want to or something like that. So definitely an option there so this is a thunderbolt dock that's why it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones then we have a little bit one of the cheaper ones this is the usb-c uh, dock as i mentioned before this is the cheaper version that go underneath you can still put 2.5 inch sata and uh, an M nvme in there but the transfer speeds for this aren't as fast as the previous version but definitely still worth checking it out but this one has a little bit better like kind of cooling option that uh, maybe allows you to have a little bit better cooling for your mac studio you know just the design of this worth checking out as well there's an extra coupon here at the moment as well then if you're traveling with your mac studio you might want to be putting a case around it just to protect it in your bags or something like that here's like a cool little portable bag that i found for the mac studio worth uh, checking out here's another monitor kind of dock or monitor stand uh, that you might want to put your monitor on you know that gives you not just the hub but also an ssd enclosure inside so basically it gives you like the docking and the monitor stand all in once as you can see, you can put NVMe drive in there, M.2 drive and the 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive in there. So a very interesting accessory if you want to check it out. Another thing here is the Apple AirPods Max. Now secretly, I've been actually using these like every single day for the last year. And even though I'm not using these in Mac OS most of the time, I'm actually using these on Windows, but they are so comfortable and they just work so, so well. So if you're a person who looks for headphones that you need to work with all day on and noise cancelling and everything, definitely worth checking them out. And they've dropped in par price quite a bit. They were like $550, but now you can get them even like $450, so $100 off. That's like almost 20% off very good deals on, as, um, on at the moment. Next of all, keyboards. This one over here is Logitech Craft, which is actually what I'm using as well. This is not the cheapest keyboard, but has one big feature, which is that wheel on the top left corner. And basically you can map it to do different things uh, in different applications. So like if you're using Photoshop, Lightroom and so on, it can be like a brush size or you can just like an extra thing that might speed up your workflow. If you are interested in that, worth checking it out, but it's not cheap. Another option is the MX key. So basically this is exactly the same keyboard just without the actual wheel and it's much more affordable. And then also MX master mouse. I've got um, the like earlier version here that I'm using for like different PCs for the main editing rig. We've got the exact same mouse. It's absolutely amazing mouse. Absolutely awesome. Can't get any better than uh, than this. Much better than the Apple Magic Mouse. Just the way your your hand is on as well. It's much more comfortable. And anyway, very, very good mouse. Worth checking out. But then there's also the Logitech MX Keys Mini. And this is a little bit smaller if you don't need like the extra numpad on the side. But also this has a few features that the Apple keyboard doesn't have. So the Apple keyboard does have the Touch ID. And I think that's the only keyboard that you can get if you need the touch id but this over here on the top there there's a few buttons that you might find very very helpful the f8 as you can see over here and the f9 f9 basically mutes the microphone if you're doing a lot of conference calls and something like that and constantly trying to find the mute button this is now on your keyboard one button boom it mutes your microphone and then the f8 over there is basically a quick screenshot so if you need to scrap scrap something on the screen you hit the f8 and then with your mouse you can drag the selection of the screen which is basically the same command as like command shift 5 i think but then you still have to move it around but this very easily gives you the option to 
like kind of scrap a portion of your screen and then have it on your clipboard or either just get it pasted on your desktop. If you need to grab some external things to record in, for example, gaming or maybe just some other devices that you need to record, then worth checking out this one. This is external capture card, but this captures 4K 60 frames per second or up to that. This is not for everybody, but definitely worth checking out. Next, some audio interfaces that I'm using and are so, so helpful. I'm using earlier version of this Focusrite uh, Scarlett 2i2. And basically what you can do is have your headphones plugged in there and at the same time monitors or like desktop monitors in there. And you can very easily switch between them to like turn the monitor down on one and turn the headphones up on the other one. Also, you know, record your mics or instruments and so on if you're a musician. But here is another option as well. This is Moto M2X 2X2. And in here in the front, you can actually see some of the audio decibels as well or audio meters to actually see that you're not clipping and so on. In here, you can actually see the monitor and the headphones kind of knob separately, which I have on the earlier version of the Scarlett. You can very easily change them differently. So changing audio from your headphones and monitors very easily to, you know, adjust it through this. Then we have some Thunderbolt 4 cables if you need to extend or have like something a little bit further away. Some good Thunderbolt cables. As you can see, this one over here and then this one over here. Very good braided cables if you need that and very affordable as well. If you need like replacements or just, you know longer cables. And now some more storage or end the two enclosures. This is something I'm using like every day, really. In fact, right now, this Blackmagic camera is actually recording into that enclosure and with the uh, Western Digital Blue SN550 SSD inside. Very affordable, very good, just works very, very well, like solid. I don't think there's anything better for the price, really. It just works and it's very good. I've got a review on that on my channel as well, but this is 10 gigabits maximum transfer speed. So you're going to get roughly about 800 megabytes per second transfer speeds. And then another option is this, what I have over here. This is a Cassis or a Cassis USB 4 interface or M.2 enclosure. And there's not a lot of Thunderbolt 4 enclosures that offer M.2 slots and that like Thunderbolt 4 bandwidth speeds. These, this is one of the only ones you can find like on Amazon. You can find some other ones like different places, but they're not so well known. This is one of them that you, you can um, find. I've got a review of this on my channel as well, if you want to check it out. But basically, you can get very fast transfer speeds up there. On Mac, I got about 2.3 and 2.6 gigabytes per second transfer speeds. On Windows PC, actually, when running Crystal Disk Mark, I can get actually up to 3 gigabytes per second, some of the transfer speeds, but just depends. Just very fast, very affordable as well, worth checking out. Then this very interesting uh, enclosure over here, this is by OWC Express. Basically, this gives you four M.2 expansion slot thing. So if you want like fast, uh, Thunderbolt 4 or Thunderbolt storage that is maybe like in your cupboard or something like that. Put Thunderbolt there, put four M.2s in there. It's very, very fast. Then some of the M.2 drives to put into the NVMe enclosures. This Western Digital SN550 is probably the best bang for buck. They have now the SN570, so it depends which one is cheaper. At the moment, this is not a very good um, option, but this is what I've usually recommended because it's got very good price. But I'm going to leave a few options in the description below and check out the prices on all of them to make sure that you get the best deal for them. Pretty much any of these work for you because you're limited by the enclosure rather than the actual drive speed. So there's this and the Samsung 980 SSD, there's Western Digital Black SN750, Crucial P2, this is Silicon Power 1 terabyte, and look how good price this is for that. Saber Rocket 1 terabyte 1, this is the Gen 3 drive, a Spatium M450, very good speeds as well, quite good price. So you can find the end of twos in the description below. Next of all, audio and having the speakers on, you know, your desk setup. These are some of the nicest or be most beautiful looking speakers I can find. So if you want to pick these up, check them out in the description below. But they look like very, very good speakers. And there's another one over here. This is the Kanto YU2 speakers. Very good speakers, very small, something like that. So then these are my recommendations. As always, you can find everything linked in the the description below and just a tip for you if you do purchase these sometimes you might get like an option to purchase this in a few different shops or it will take you to a few different shops make sure that you check the link or the price on all of these shops out just because 
you might get it cheaper in Newegg, for example, than Amazon or B&H. Why not get a deal if you can get it from a different shop? And if you've got any other recommendations, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks guys for watching. Likes if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.